Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. For this week's video, we're gonna go through 10 of my favorite guitars in the collection. Let's check them out. All right, so first up is this Paul Reed Smith Custom 24. So it's got 24 frets, and obviously this is the gold top version. Uh, just really beautiful, looks amazing under all the lights. Um, uh, a really great thick carved maple top. You can see how thick that is. There's a exposed binding that goes around the perimeter. And I don't know if you'll be able to see in the neck joint here, but it gets quite thick uh, where the neck joins the body. So yeah, a really thick uh, maple cap and the rest of the guitar is mahogany. So we've got exposed gear uh, locking tuners, which are really light, and I think they'd look uh, super cool as well. And then a more satin mahogany um, headstock face. So yeah, just really, really playable, um, great trim system, the square bobbin pickups, again, which is a hallmark of the more modern PRS guitars. And I think in the future, um, I do have an SE, sorry, I'm gonna look at my monitor here, right there. Um, the SE has a three-way switch with um, the coil splits, and this one has a five-way switch. So I always think it's interesting how ma manufacturers um, split up humbucker-equipped guitars. So we'll do a comparison and just see how they're all split up and whether you know a three-way switch with the coil split is better than the five-way switch. Um, so yeah, look for that in the future. Now, if there's one guitar that gets requested on the channel, it's an SG. You guys are clamoring for some SG content. So this is the newest acquisition to the collection. Uh, the rest of the guitars I've had for a while, but this is a very cool Gibson SG3. So they're getting a little bit harder to find uh, just because I think they were only made for one or two years. Um, and this one just looks awesome in ebony and gold. Um, it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck, just standard SG stuff. Um, but this one obviously has three pickups. So you've got two 57 classics and then a classic plus. So a little bit hotter on the bridge. And the unique thing is it's got this chicken head knob. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. I'll try to get it behind a reflection. There you go. Anyway, it's got the, yeah, a weird chicken head knob on it. It's sort of like an F hole on a telly, a little bit out of place, but looks cool at the same time. So yeah, just looks classy and classic in this ebony and gold. And then it's got the chicken head knob. So this is a six way switch. So it gives you a bunch of different tones, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, if you want to just treat it as an SG standard, you can. So you can just have the bridge or the neck or the bridge and the neck together and just treat it as an SG, regular SG. And then of course you can blend in a bunch of different uh, tones via this rotary switch. So a very cool SG and yeah, we'll uh, definitely feature it on the channel in the future. All right, my favorite guitar number three is the stunning Les Paul Standard. Now this is the double cut version, obviously. So your thumb can get way up high and give you a little bit better fret access. Um, locking tuners on the back. Uh, yeah, just the standard Les Paul stuff, uh, mahogany. And then of course this really cool ocean blue flame maple top. Um, yeah, just beautiful guitar. Turns heads wherever it goes for sure. I call it my beautiful impractical guitar because I've got other instruments that sound better, uh, that are more playable, that are more durable, that hold tune better. Um, you know, <laughs> everything is stacked against this thing. Um, but it's just sort of one of those items uh, that was so always my dream guitar. So I was able to purchase this um, as a celebration when the channel hit 100,000 subs, which is crazy. And it's about to turn over 200,000 subs. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, never would have imagined the channel would grow like this. But anyway, uh, a really fun guitar to play. It's really light because it's chambered. So instead of being a 10 pound Les Paul, it is you know, a seven pound Les Paul, which is really great. I think the only downside is I don't love the burst bucker pickups. Like I was mentioning um, on the SG, uh, the 57 classics and the 59 tributes I find much better. So these guys might go. If I decide to put something else in there, I'll 
put it on the channel so you guys can see what I decide to do. But other than that, just an amazingly beautiful guitar. My favorite guitar, number four, is this Ibanez Prestige. This is the S series. I've had this one for a few months now and the honeymoon is over. Happily, I can say I'm still in love, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so it's supremely playable, just like that PRS. Um, it makes you play fast, it makes you play differently, it makes you wanna pull off runs that you maybe wouldn't wanna play on you know, a different style guitar, but it's got locking tuners, no locking nut, which is great for quickly changing tuning or just tuning up really quickly because it's got the fixed bridge. So yeah, really great, so light, um, really balanced, so no, no neck droop or anything like that. Um, yeah, weighs like four pounds or something like that. It's just crazy. So it's so great to play on. I think the only thing I don't like about it is this horrible, horrible switch cover. Uh, when I show you this guitar, I just want to go like this. Just check that guitar out. Look how beautiful it is. And then you pull it off and you're like, ah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, Ibanez, if anyone from Ibanez ever sees this, change this, please. This cheap plastic cover, make it wood, make it even clear plastic so you can see the finish underneath. But this thing just is terrible. So anyway, if any of you guys know of aftermarket companies that make uh, something a little bit better, uh, put it in the comments below and I'll check it out because that's that's pretty nasty. But other than that, the guitar, I have zero complaints. You got a mahogany body, maple neck with uh, the reinforced titanium rods. Uh, this thing doesn't move. And I found that with my RG as well. Um, come winter, come summer, uh, most of my guitars will need a, a tweak on the, on the truss rod. These ones do not, they're so stable. So I'll, I guess, sorry, I'm looking over there. The RG is behind the camera, but um, yeah, in the future we'll compare the S series versus the RG. So again, check that out. All right, my fifth favorite guitar in the collection is this Godain Multiac. So this is a really, really cool guitar. It's got a synth output. I haven't used it yet, but you did notice that I played this thing, this nylon string with like some distortion and delay on it. Um, yeah, it's so versatile. It sounds great as just a straight ahead guitar, but you can get all sorts of different interesting timbers on it, which is what I love. So I took classical guitar in university for a couple of years. Um, I wasn't much of a classical player. I didn't, it didn't really resonate with me, but I do love the nylon string sound. So I'm so happy that Godain makes this uh, multi-act nylon. Uh, this is the Slim. So that just means instead of the full two, uh, two inch nut width, you get a narrower nut, which means, you know, when you're switching from electric guitar or acoustic guitar and playing on nylon string, it doesn't, it's not so jarring. Like your, your string spacing isn't so far off that you're missing notes and stuff. So yeah, it's really quick to go between this guitar and other guitars. And of course you've got individual uh, string transducers so you can get perfect balance. And yeah, like I said, you can use all sorts of effects and pedals with it and it sounds great. Um, it's not going to feed back because it's not a full acoustic instrument. So lots of really cool advantages to it. A nice recessed uh, neck joint, bolt on neck. So really solid construction. Um, it's durable and it sounds great. So definitely earns a spot in my favorite guitars. Now, if you guys are regular subscribers to the channel, you've probably seen this guitar played multiple times. Um, such a cool instrument. This was my first real build. Um, and so, yeah, it might be my favorite guitar. I don't want to choose, but anyway, yeah, one of my top favorite guitars that I'll never get rid of. Um, simply because, yeah, it was my first build. Everything came in pieces. I had to line up the Bigsby, uh, file the bridge here, pick the pickups, do the electronics, do all the soldering, um, and then of course piece it all together, um, sand the neck, make sure the angle was right, and in the end it turned out really great. So it's really fun to play. 
kind of that aged look. And again, like I was talking about earlier, um, you know, that telly is just such a utilitarian design and then they slap something fancy like an F hole and it just kind of throws your brain for a loop, but I just love it. Uh, it's got that sort of vintage weird look, uh, unique looking pickups, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, this is a mahogany body, really light, nice and resonant. So if you're not plugged in, it's just fun to play on anyway. And the Bigsby is so smooth um, and it really holds tune. And that has to do with the saddles. I have grooved saddles here, um, not compensated, but it allows the strings to slide back and forth really, really easily. So it holds tune, which is, you know, uh, really important. And um, it, it's a little bit tricky to play on because the neck's really thick, which I do like, um, but it's got that seven and a quarter inch radius. So if you're coming from a Les Paul or an Ibanez where that has like almost a flat radius, this one feels really tricky to play on. So it's a little bit harder to play on than, than other instruments, but really re rewarding. And uh, yeah, one that will be in my collection forever. All right, guitar number seven is this really beautiful select Stratocaster. Now this has got like a PRS quality uh, top on it. Just really, really beautiful. I'll try to get some angles uh, for you guys. But anyway, yeah, just an astonishingly beautiful Strat. Um, you don't often see, you know, Strats come in, in finishes like this. It's mostly solid colors and stuff. So I picked this one up used. This was a gigged guitar. So there's some scratches and some dings on it and stuff. So it's not pristine but it just looks amazing and yeah, really fun to play on. It's got the compound radius neck, so you never choke out your bends when you get up high. So it plays like, yeah, like a Les Paul or an Ibanez or something like that um, up high and then down low, it's really easy to chord. So it plays like a traditional Fender um, down there and then up high, it's super easy to play. So great, great guitar. So it's Alder with Maple, again, an interesting combination. And yeah, it's got a contoured uh, heel joint there, which actually does help. And of course the, the belly cut, um, the neck's fairly plain. It's supposed to be bird maple, but it, it does have some simple figuring in it, um, but nothing too fancy. And of course, locking tuners and some more figuring on the top. So yeah, it's really, really fun to play. The HSS um, pickup configuration is perfect. So yeah, really versatile, true single coil pickups. So they're not noiseless, which I do prefer. And if I ever, you know, if I'm getting too much hum at a gig or something with, with dimmers and lights and stuff, you can just go to your bridge. And of course it's got its own tone control. So if it's too bright, you can just dial it back and get a really, really nice thick sound. So yeah, versatile instrument. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's beautiful. It's fun to play. Definitely deserves a spot in the top 10. All right, so let's look at favorite guitar number eight. Now here we're in some tricky waters. Um, what we have here is the ultimate Epiphone build. If you guys missed that, I'll put a link to it above. Um, but anyway, we took this Epiphone, modded it a bunch, uh, but long story short, we have uh, true single coil sounds, true P90s, um, humbucker parallel and humbucker series. And we did a blind test. Um, where we compared each one of those individual sounds versus like a Strat, a Tele, a Les Paul, um, a bunch of different American-made guitars in a blind test and people had a really hard time figuring out which was which. So that tells you that the build was a, su a success and that it's got some killer tones on board and it cost, you know, like a third of a traditional, forget about a standard, but it, it costs, uh, you know, five or six hundred bucks and you get a ton of tones. So, um, yeah, anyway, I have a soft spot in, in my heart for that guitar. But in the end, I think I decided to go with the traditional. Um, I prefer the sound of a Les Paul traditional over a standard. 
Um, I just think the pickups sound sound better. Like I mentioned on the double cut, I'm not a fan of the burst buckers. Um, so I think uh, a traditional sounds better uh, to my ear. And this is like a full 10 or 11 pounds. It's just heavy. It's a beast. It's hard to play. It's got like a, <laughs> a mother thick neck. Um, you know, all the traditional uh, appointments of what you would expect from a Les Paul and deals out some amazing tones too. So yeah, just makes you work for the notes, but nothing really sounds like a Les Paul traditional for me. So great guitar. All right, so for favorite guitar number nine, again, I had an epically tough choice choosing. Um, we have the Stone Bridge here and the Rain Song Carbon Fiber. So the Stone Bridge has a cedar top um, instead of spruce, which means it's really great for finger style, um, playing quietly, all the notes are nicely balanced, um, easy to pull harmonics off, just an, a beautiful sounding, one of the best sounding acoustics I've ever played um, and really playable, just really fun to play on. Um, and then you've got the Rain Song, and this one's light. Um, it's sort of my workhorse guitar. So in the end, I decided to go with the Rain Song simply because, um, you know, I've taught for so many years and continue to teach uh, off this guitar. So I know it like the back of my hand. Um, again, in Canada right now, it's epically cold. So I can just throw this in my truck and head out to work. Um, no problems, it gets cold, it gets hot. Um, nothing phases it. So a great, great instrument, so light. Um, and once you plug it in, like if you're at a gig where you're, you're not gonna be miking because you're playing with other instruments, um, it sounds the same as an acoustic instrument anyway. So it's got a great preamp on it um, and a tuner. So it's got some really good advantages and just from years of playing on this, I've kind of bonded with it. So a really, really awesome sounding guitar. Um, not as nice sounding as the, the Stonebridge for sure, but the other, uh, yeah, sort of like the emotional factor plus uh, plus some of the advantages of a composite instrument make this definitely one of my favorites. All right, from the clip you just saw, you know I didn't choose either of these guitars. <laughs> I should have just made it my like top favorite 15. But anyway, the Tele Deluxe uh, humbucker equipped Tele didn't quite make the cut. Awesome guitar, so fun to play on. Um, really cool vintagey vibe. Sounds great. Uh, the pickups are unpotted, so it's not great for high gain, but it's really comfortable. You get a little tummy cut and it's got the, the new deep C profile and the new frets. So really, really great to play on, but didn't quite make the cut. Um, a little bit closer was this Tele build. Um, this was one of my other builds, so you get a double bound body, which you don't see all the time on Tele's. Um, yeah, sort of like a nice classy look. We've got a P90 that just kicks butt in the neck and uh, the chopper T. So it kind of looks classy and really nice, but it'll like tear your face off. This thing just sounds amazing. Really great. Um, a neck that really turns heads again. It's a walnut neck from Warmoth with just a huge thick slab of flame maple for the fingerboard. So just gorgeous when you're when you're sitting down to play on it. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna look at my monitor again here. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, just an amazing flame on that one. Uh, such a cool guitar. Um, yeah, anyway, in the end, the standard one out, let's take a look at it. All right, so here she is. This one is a year 2000 Telecaster, just a great sounding guitar. Uh, the perfect combination of chime with a little bit of body. Um, I think it sounds better than some of the newer ones. So yeah, just a great instrument. Um, I traded uh, a guy an American Strat for this. I had a couple Strats kicking around and I never really saw myself playing a Telecaster, but as soon as I started playing Tellys, just fell in love with them. The simplicity, uh, the tone, good playability. Yeah, just a great guitar. Nothing fancy about it, but it's got 18 years of honest work on it. And yeah, just an awesome guitar.
So there you go. That was just a quick peek into some of my favorite instruments. Uh, let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. And if there's any other guitars you'd like to see featured on the channel this year, also drop that in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Other than that, have a great week, you guys. We'll see you next week with a new video. Take care.